Okay, hello everybody. This is the Most Music Talks. Um, it's uh, like a streaming series that we are we have started during the pandemic to to keep the most spirit alive. Most, as probably most of you know, um, is um, is kind of a music market development project co-financed by the European Union. Uh, there is a, an umbrella strategy for nine countries from the Balkan uh, to develop certain areas, kind of targeting missing links in the value chain. Uh, so we've got one pillar for artists, another one for professionals, including managers, agents, promoters, media people. Um, the third pillar uh, targets festivals and basically all kinds of concert venues. And the fourth one uh, is targeted by what we call uh, urban creatives. Uh, it's basically for tandems of uh, people living in cities, creating projects together with their local city council or municipality. And today, I guess we will mainly be talking about uh, the festival scene, the festival landscape. And uh, before we start, sorry for the delay, sorry for the change of platform, we had some technical difficulties. And what could be more symbolic to a Balkan seemed talk than, you know, nothing is working, but at the end we find some workaround and we make it work. Mm. So here we are, our guests today are Katarina Evko from Pin Music Showcase and Conference in Skopje. That is actually, is in a very exciting phase. It's coming up in a few days, uh, second half of this week. And Bojan Jordic uh, from Serbia, uh, Ring Ring, Todo Mundo Festival, radio, management, label, so many things. Uh, hi, Katarina. Hi, Boyan. Hello. Hi, Balaj. Hello. Hi, Katarina. Hi, Boyan. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before we we have an in-depth look uh, at our team, how is PIN going? Is it ready to start on Thursday? Uh, it's hectic as uh, hectic can get on the Balkans. So, it's <laughs> just a couple of days before we start PIN. Um, Yes, uh, we are quite ready. We also uh, managed to to make uh, another, I hope, interesting but also large uh, uh, program for this year's edition. It starts just a few days, uh, just in a few days, actually on Thursday. That, that's the, when the official opening will be. Yeah, and actually, it includes a few most related program items. It includes. It includes. Uh, uh, I don't, we tend to be. Uh, to get as big as we can, <laughs> as yeah. possible as we can manage to, to make it. So <laughs> at the moment, we have like 200 delegates coming from all over the Europe. And uh, we also have more than 30 concerts live in three days, uh, maybe uh, on a scale of, uh, I don't know, worldwide scene or uh, the showcases in the United States or somewhere across the ocean. Uh, this is not a large number, but for Skopje, for the Balkan, for Macedonia, it's a really impressive number, I would say. <laughs> and we're glad, glad to host it. Yeah, it absolutely is. And, uh, and I mean, for those of you who just make up your minds last minute, uh, it's still worth coming. There will be a panel on most uh, on Friday, right? On Friday. Yes. There will be uh, one of the first round of, of um, most artists showcasing the Gypsy Group from Pristina. Mm, but there will be also lots of other cool stuff. Well, PIN is probably the my favorite most sarcastic festival, if I think of your <laughs> <laughs> of your emails and videos and yeah. well, style. Thank Boyan, you. <laughs> Boyan, are you coming this year? Skopje. Uh, yeah, I got an invitation from uh, Taxirat and the password, but unfortunately, 
I cannot go there because our uh, own Ring Ring Festival, which has been postponed three times, starts tomorrow. So uh, the festival will last until uh, December 3rd. So I also miss uh, music meeting in Pistoia in Italy, where you will be Balaj, as far as I know. But uh, that's really uh, extremely fantastic showcase festival, great hospitality, and this time more people than any time uh, before, as far as I know. So it's congratulations to uh, Passport team. You make really great stuff. And uh, I'm happy that world music is now uh, represented much more than before. Yeah, thank you, Boyan. <laughs> Uh, as a matter of fact, it's not the, 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 the biggest uh, edition. Uh, the first one was. So how crazy is that? <laughs> and um, and Skopje, Skopje is a fantastic place to be. So I recommend to everyone to be there. And there will be a lot of people to talk and really many, many different bands to see. OK, now it's time to, to talk about Ring Ring. How are you? Boyan, with the preparations? Yeah, so the Ring Ring is more experimental and uh, avant-garde and free jazz festival, and it's uh, really getting closer. So first rehearsals we are having uh, tonight, and there will be three world premiere, and it's 55th edition, so it's big as it's possible, maybe bigger than we can handle, but at the end, it will be lots of great music, and uh, luckily all the people will be able to come so no restrictions uh, on this point okay so just this week there are two major events happening in the region uh, and still lots of times we we need to face the fact that a lot of people in europe they are just not aware uh, that there are so many things going on in the balkans yeah at the same time tonight is also and uh, also next Monday, the concerts on Ethnofest in Subotica, which yeah. is also a very important festival and part of the most festival exchange project. Yes. So why do you think it's, it's not visible from outside the region, this kind of uh, buzz um, that's happening in the region? Or, or is there a buzz? Or you are you still saying that it could be much more? I think there is a buzz, but also I think it's visible. It depends on what kind of the festivals. I mean, PIN is, I mean, 10, 200 people are coming. So uh, yeah. they are absolutely uh, visible and their team is uh, working hard on this for many years. Uh, Ring Ring is another kind of festival which attracts less audience, but still uh, people know about it and uh, people are coming and performing. That's the issue. So. I'm not worried, but uh, also uh, the world music scene, as far as I uh, know from the Balkans, it's not that visible as it we would like to be. Neither festivals uh, yeah. nor the bands. That's, uh, yeah, that, that's that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah that, that's uh, another issue. So uh, there are no more war in the Balkans. And that's why the uh, Balkan is not in the focus of the rest of the Europe. Now uh, we are dealing with our own pro problems and uh, all the structures haven't been set up yet. So that's, uh, uh, that is one of the reasons I think it's uh, really not in the focus. And still uh, also uh, we need to create uh, some more visibility together, also through most as well. But on the other hand, I mean, uh, the budget for this kind of stuff is not existing except on Exit Festival, which is also a partner uh, of uh, most project. And they have uh, these financial possibilities to invite people from the worldwide area and also to advertise internationally. We are still all quite... I will say quite small compared to the big festivals like our partner Glattonverkert or uh, I mean Budapest Ritmo as well or uh, the other festivals which are in Europe. But then uh, when you compare to the rest of the um, Europe uh, in Serbia, there are quite a lot of uh, world music festivals and some are emerging. So they exist for two or three years. So that's also the reason why they are not uh, more visible and still they are not uh, going to this 
conferences, showcase festivals, so people don't know about them. Uh, that's another issue. And as far as I know, not many festivals in Macedonia are existing in Bosnia. I think there is none in Croatia. There are several festivals, but also like emerging stuff. And that's uh, going uh, also slowly together, together with the whole scene. So I think that uh, this should work only as a joint venture. Festivals, artists, uh, journalists and uh, media uh, that should go out together. Like in Croatia, the scene is getting better and better and the festivals are growing. So nowadays you have extremely fantastic festivals and a series of concerts in Zagreb. Uh, and there are also uh, quite a few very interesting new names. But still, I think that uh, there is no language barrier, just uh, they need international releases, which is at this moment the thing we are uh, lacking when you speak about the artists. You said that... Um... Balkans is not so interesting since the war ended. Are you suggesting that the sexiness of the Balkans was its bloody history? Uh, no, just uh, the people were focusing on the Balkans. And then when the war uh, broke out, the people knew about the Balkans. When the war stopped, uh, then the people said, okay, let's see how this is going to develop the, all this things that are happening uh, were really uh, bloody and disgusting and really many uh, crime things and atrocities. And then, okay, let's go to the music. And then when it all passed and then everybody will say, okay, the Balkans is now calm and they will live uh, peacefully ever after. And then it's just uh, the media attention goes out from the Balkans. Of course, uh, the brass bands and Bregovic those uh, were uh, really making success not only uh, from the Balkans but also worldwide then the next step has to be made and that's uh, how these things should be created and uh, when we speak about the brass bands the main uh, artist from Serbia that was not brass band and that made the international success was Boris Kovac but then he created in the really perfect time the last Balkan Talgo album which sold really hugely uh, worldwide and lots of concerts. So again, that also has to be connected with this Balkan issue and all the tragedy that happened uh, in the Balkans. Still, when you speak about, uh, for example, Romania, uh, you know that Taraf and uh, Chokarlia, people know about them, but how many uh, people in the West know about the other bands? Then when we speak about the Bosnia, you know much more than uh, the other groups like very famous Dubioza or Amira or Damir or Divanhana on Bojo Vrecho. But then in Macedonia, there are also few names that are known. So even there are flourishing scenes. But I think that uh, just this interest for the Balkan music is somehow uh, slowly moving upwards. And that will be also supported by the most. And that is one of the reasons uh, why most is important for all of us. How the rest of the world will find out about this uh, artist uh, and uh, all these things that are happening in the, in the Balkans. And also let's try to learn how to promote ourselves. It's not that it's enough that we play uh, on the local ground. So is it that the that successful trend of the 90s, uh, basically the upbeat brass band, uh, was too successful and it's kind of hanging as a shadow over the market right now. So everybody that that manages expectations, so everybody's expecting the same style um, from every Balkan artist these days. So any artists outside of that style I think are, the... are, are suffering from this expectation? That, that was uh, the reason for will say that that was the case over the last six, seven years, but now the things are slowly changing. It's just uh, uh, going in the different direction and people uh, are aware of the, some other music that is not only brass and dance music, but that will, that will take time because this is not like immediate punch uh, in the face like the brass music when everybody knows about this and uh, it was quite famous and popular still I mean there are only three four uh, brass bands from the Balkans that are 
popular and well known. The others, uh, even they are good, they are not as popular as the others. So it's just this uh, shade, uh, which was maybe also wrongly put by uh, Western media. I mean, also when you were going to the Western city shops, there was only Balkan or brass and nothing else. I mean, we spoke about Boris Kovac and he was in the section gypsy music. Yeah. <laughs> Katarina, when you are designing your showcase lineup, are you taking these stereotypes, expectations into consideration? Uh, not, not really, because we tend actually to, to have a, a big variety of styles uh, in our program. Uh, we do uh, tend to follow the stereotypes for the local audience, I have to say, because uh, we do have the delegates, we do have our, um, I would say, uh, fellows from the industry, the professionals who, are, who can easily recognize what we have to offer. But then we have the local audience, which is uh, the soul of uh, any concert, because uh, performance without an audience is pretty sad. And uh, uh, the struggle here is actually to, to attract the local people to come and discover something new, regardless of where they come from, including the Balkan countries, the neighboring countries, and even uh, Western Europe. But I would say that that's, that's a, something that doesn't have to do only with the Balkans, but uh, with something that is not mainstream, with something that is not familiar on the first two seconds when you hear the name or the song. And uh, also on the, on, on the point of educating the media, educating the, the governments here on the Balkans, because the struggle here is that we actually have to do some, everything on our own. That's the feeling, that's the general feeling. I have to say it was much harder when we started PIN. That was in 2012. And uh, it, I mentioned on purpose that our biggest uh, issue, uh, edition was the first one. We have 500 delegates at this, this edition, <laughs> 200 just from, from Germany and uh, Austria, for example. But, uh, but then we didn't have uh, such a conference in the region at all. It was only us. Uh, it was like sort of an experiment and it was a real struggle. Uh, it went really well, but then we just took a uh, step back because for us it was exhausting to to try to organize and do everything with fifth uh, I think there were around 40 concerts th that year and uh, we took a step back we, we made a couple of years um, break from pin and and we focused on actually uh, meeting all the important colleagues that we collaborate with now and from this type of collaborations and connections with uh, with our uh, common people from, from the Balkan and, uh, and abroad actually started up to, uh, to have now different projects, different conferences, uh, larger scale of networking, more opportunities for promoting artists and for uh, doing all sorts of different, uh, different festivals. So I would say that actually it's, uh, it's always with a lot of struggle here on the Balkans when you want to, do, to make something and you want, uh, when you, uh, want to, to bring something uh, something new and something more important, of course. Uh, but then we got to uh, go slower, I guess, because of that. But uh, unfortunately, with all every positive things that are developing right now, starting, I mean, when I compare 2012 and now, uh, we're still just with baby steps when it comes to promoting our uh, bands on the Western scene. And um, what's your feeling? Does this diversity that you are providing, um, does it come through? Um, how do the delegates accept it? The delegates are uh, quite professional <laughs> people. So uh, they, you know how it goes. When you go to a conference as a delegate, you always check uh, who else is coming. You always see the list of the bands. You try to see and catch as many bands as you can. So. Uh, that's what we all usually do on conferences. And uh, I think that actually for uh, all the people that we, we tend to have uh, bands uh, when, we, when, we, when we make the program of PIN, we tend to choose bands who, who we think that would be uh, of interest of the people and festivals that we have with representatives um, in the delegates program. So on the start actually our focus is to to get together uh, people who will have their common interest to collaborate and to go on and 
to develop new uh, collaborations. Uh, sometimes uh, I think that has to be some uh, personal input in all of this, knowing the people personally, who is coming from uh, which festival, login here is the uh, main source of ideas because he knows everyone, he knows actually, uh, and he has this sense, uh, good sense, like which act is good for which festival. So that's how we actually somehow co combine the program. So not really following the, the, the aspect of the genre. So it's really a mixed up program. We have everything in, in the same night on the same stage. <laughs> and very different bands performing one after another. And uh, have you got feedback from the artists in terms of uh, how performing at most have boosted their career? Uh, well, yes, and not of not most pin. Uh, pin, yes, but uh, <laughs> and yes, uh, yes. Uh, at the beginning, it was uh, we have this other challenge, uh, which is actually goes on in line with the point that I was talking about uh, previously. Uh, we uh, faced a situation where uh, some of the the acts uh, coming from the Balkan were expecting had like really high expectations. Like they, the, the whole concept and idea of uh, showcasing and conferences was with an expectance that after this performance, they will have, uh, I don't know, a signed agreement with, with Amy or Universal Music. So it's uh, uh, sometimes those uh, unrealistic expectations bring uh, uh, disappointment. But uh, I must say that was years and years ago. So uh, being constant and not giving up in this uh, kind, kind of uh, uh, educational uh, events that we, that we organize uh, brings another aspect. And that's that uh, actually bands are now more prepared to present themselves at conferences. They, they learn how the, the industry function, uh, they, better, they learn better how the English industry actually functions because let's be honest, it, it is a business, it is an industry. So you gotta know the rules, and you have to know how the, the what's the way and the steps to 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 present yourself at and the at the best way. So uh, the last couple of years, it's a really really extremely better uh, situation <laughs> regarding the bands. And yes, we also have feedbacks from bands traveling uh, on uh, festivals that we had presented at PIN conference. Uh, Pohoda booked some bands from PIN conference, for example. So it's not just here, the neighboring countries, even bigger festivals pick up some bands from here. We had Peria, the Macedonian X from uh, previous PIN that got uh, through you to Eurosonic. Uh, another Macedonian band as well, Feng Shui, I think. So that's, uh, of course, good success for them. And I would say uh, for PIN in, the, in an indirect uh, combination. So that they are aware of how the industry works, it also includes that um, they are not not expecting to become. Um, yeah, as as Marezapova kind of big uh, in one instance. So like it, they okay. they know they are feng shui and not as Marezapova. No, it's okay to expect uh, to have big expectations, but uh, not that they will come overnight. Someone maybe will be so lucky and uh, have the luck of becoming an overnight success. But usually even the, the acts, we all know that even the acts that we see promoted as uh, overnight uh, hits are not really happened to uh, acts that develop their careers overnight, but it's a really long and strategic work on their promotion and their work and uh, music. So that's actually the point. I, I don't want to say at all that, that bands and acts sh sh are not supposed to have big expectations, but to to really know in depth uh, the, how the industry functions, what do you want to achieve, and what is the, the what are the steps and the road to 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 get to your achievement, planned achievement. So mm -hmm. that's it. I mean, if you wanna, you know, if you want to get to Eurosonic and you come from the Balkans, you you have to start from the slower and smaller conferences and showcases. So I don't know who. I really don't know anyone from the Balkan that managed to perform on some of these major conferences and showcases just overnight. So, yeah, um, that's what that's what the guys from Naked uh, told us the last time. That the main thing it uh, it requires is stamina, and patience, yes. and, and commit commitment. 
dubiosa is such an example, for example, also including Eurosonic yeah. and so, such uh, uh, events before uh, taking major festivals. So they had like, I don't know, performance at Eurosonic. Their first performance at, Euro at Eurosonic, for example, were, for example, was in front of uh, delegates coming from the Balkans, our own people, and uh, some of the people from Yugoslavian countries living in uh, Netherlands. And after a, a few years and the next year afterwards, they, they were the, the best uh, act at the whole conference showcase. So, you know, it's not overnight. It's a really hard working long process. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, well, uh, talking about our people, uh, and and this question is for both of you, that um, how important for you is kind of the inter-Balkan export? Um, how much are you are you focusing on? How is it? How much is it working? Uh, artist exchange or export inside the area? very much for us for example mm -hmm. because uh, that's that was my point exactly comparing the 2012 edition step back and and now now we the the, the networking between us is uh, much better developed and set uh, the joint projects many that we have like most and now the hemi and uh, the sma the small festival accelerator so these are actually uh, projects that uh, function in a way like uh, compensate for, for what we don't have uh, given to us uh, here on the Balkan. For example, if we don't have an official export office nowhere on the Balkans, <laughs> in these countries actually, which uh, works uh, from the state's position uh, fully devoted to promoting its local scene abroad, then we do it I, I'm hearing I'm hearing Serbia is almost there. There's but, something, something brewing in Serbia in terms of... Uh, that's great. And what, but what we do here, uh, gathered all together through conferences and these projects, is actually just uh, ourselves doing this thing that we that we lack here. So it, I think it's really really important for us. Yeah, even if there are no export offices, there are there are export people. I mean, individuals who who have been working the market for yeah. dec decades now, like you, Boyan, for example. Yeah, uh, that's uh, an interesting question. I mean, from the uh, institutions of the state, we don't really get this kind of uh, support. And then uh, this now it's only uh, on the collaboration between us in the Balkans when we uh, speak about this. Uh, also, uh, when we speak about PIN and Taxirat and Password, they can easily maybe collaborate much easier with the others because they have uh, rock bands and pop bands. When we speak about this uh, experimental avant-garde stuff, then we collaborate uh, really easily with uh, uh, all these uh, groups that are coming from uh, ex-Yugoslavia and from the Balkans. But then when it's a world music in question, then it's a little bit slower because the audience for the world music is not completely ready to accept uh, and be interested for the Balkans. That's another very important issue, uh, how we create the space for the Balkan artists at our festivals. The, we had some Balkan artists, I mean, then from Bosnia, it's uh, really popular here in Serbia, but then from Macedonia, it's not that popular uh, as it is uh, locally, but also like brass bands here, they're not that popular as you can imagine. They are not going to sell thousand uh, plus tickets that's another issue how the uh, local people uh, are looking towards the Balkan music. But anyhow, the export, uh, I mean, all the Balkan countries and Balkan artists are probably more oriented to the West than locally. They, I mean, playing uh, in the region is also nice and uh, people are trying and making even their own connections, but as I said, not many huge festivals uh, or smaller festivals are happening in the region. And that's why uh, all this uh, is getting slower. And of course, the uh, budgets are higher in the West or in the EU. And that's why also the bands are trying to get uh, to the major uh, or smaller festivals in the West. So still, I mean, you mentioned Naked. They have been 
all over the places. They have been uh, in different uh, part of, parts of the Balkans and they are really making a success story because they have been at PIN and later they uh, developed their uh, career in Macedonia. Now they have been just uh, 10 days ago touring in Macedonia again. They have been to Bosnia to a festival and then uh, performing there and they have been to Croatia again this summer. Romania, they are already having a special agent for a Romanian festival. So this is kind of success stories, but still we have to develop really uh, like a good collaboration. And also now there are these mobility funds, which is going to help us locally. So we would like to bring Peria for the next uh, edition of Todo Mundo. So we agreed with them, they will try to get this budget. We had uh, uh, also the Macedonian uh, band uh, Dobrila and Dorian this year. So this is how it works and also the other way uh, around. But still, I will say the uh, even the uh, Expo Serbian uh, export uh, office will be probably more focused on the West. And also when we speak to the uh, government people and people in the institutions, they will not consider as some success if the bands are performing in the Balkans. That's also how we, uh, I mean, when I say we, and that means the people from the Balkans are look to what is the achievement. If you are playing in ex-Yugoslavia, then it's kind of normal, like you play at home. But then if you go to the Germany or Scandinavia, then it's a big thing, even if you play for only for the ex yugo community. Yeah, what's, what's behind that? Is it a kind of um, political snobbery? <clears throat> or I will I will say that's that's one of one of the main reasons and I mean also when we were ex Yugoslavia then uh, when you were making success in the West that was something when you were making success in the East that was not really uh, something very very important like playing in the uh, Eastern countries was not that was not that important now uh, it's still the same like uh, the things are coming from uh, the West are taken much better than uh, coming from the rest of the world, but still it's changing uh, slowly, but the things are changing and we are accepting all this kind of uh, success, which is going uh, to happen elsewhere. Uh, I mean, it's a big thing for uh, people to play a tour in Macedonia, because I think even for the local bands, that's not possible always. So if any band from uh, the region can perform a tour in Serbia, that's a big issue. And then some of the bands will get uh, lots of promotion and the local releases and also media attention. Um, you, you've mentioned that uh, the number of world music festivals is not too big. Well, what should be needed to, to increase that? It's, um, Simply, it's a question of consuming power or size of audience. These are two things that are important. But I mean, when we speak about the Serbia, the number of the festivals is maybe big uh, for this kind of country because there are five festivals which are existing for three years. There are another five that exist for more than uh, 10 years or so. So I will say there are something like 10 festivals of the world music but also you have exit which is not world music festival but with a world music program you have nishville which also has some kind of world music program and then on the other hand the festivals are growing in the smaller cities where they have a really good audience there will be finally a world music festival in novi sad next year uh, there was a concert syria and now the festival so it's also uh, how we market these things and also how uh, we are understood from the uh, local authorities. Because if they see as world music is kind of pop music, which is not popular as pop music, then they will not give a support. And then, I mean, when you start in the festival and do it for two or three years, you need some, some support to start it uh, from the scratch. You cannot really uh, invest uh, 10,000 of uh, euros just to uh, do it properly from the beginning. I mean, for the beginning, you invest your own money, but later uh, you definitely deserve some uh, extra support. And that's why also all these uh, European projects are very, very important. 
that's how most of us are uh, getting uh, in touch with the others as a partners, but also how we can uh, bring some artists from Europe as well. Katarina, past where this is involved in all kinds of genres, not just world music. I, I, I'd say mainly not world music. So world music is also for you on the on the side of what you're doing. Well, right? uh, well. Not, not sure about this. <laughs> uh, things uh, change uh, from year to year. The point is that password is uh, now in the past, uh, I would say almost 10 years, uh, mainly focused on festivals, on music festivals. Um, of course, uh, Login is uh, still in vigorously working on the on the booking and promoting uh, artists, but that's uh, like we, we leave that job to him <laughs> mainly. And uh, the team is um, uh, in love with music festivals. So this kind of uh, love <laughs> uh, brings us to a point that we cherish festivals as as events that combine uh, mix all sorts of audience and performances performance as well. So. On Taxirat, for example, which is mainly known as a, as a punk rock festival, maybe, but it's not so. The audience is changing, the trends are changing, and we actually almost every year used to include uh, one world state, uh, world music act, like not among the major uh, acts. Taxirat has a strange lineup because it's uh, all our headliners. So we have like a major act from each genre. It's, it's not like, I mean, the opening act is usually a major act coming from the metal scene so it's not like uh, no mm -hmm. name bands performing at the beginning and then the highlight starts at the end um, so we here we mix uh, all sorts of genres uh, usually doing it uh, with the risk of being uh, uh, treated from the audience like kind of strangely because uh, you know the the clubbing people don't really like to come and hear a world music uh, act before their best favorite DJ, but we do it on purpose actually. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's it's a winter festival, but then we have the, the summer festival, D festival, which has more stages. And this is another opportunity to have stage which will be devoted to this kind of music. So the stages can be divided on, uh, depending on the genre that we uh, mm -hmm. combine, uh, make, uh, do in a li lineup. And I think that this is a good thing to have for uh, bringing uh, discoveries for the audience. Because when we, you do only a, a world music festival, the audience is 99% the same audience that likes this sort of music. But when you mix it in uh, bigger festivals with different stages, with different genres, with a lot of young audience that comes to just discover what's going on, uh, it's also a sort of educational approach. And I think that's why we do love and cherish festivals <laughs> here in Password. So I would say it's not that world music is something left out from our program and uh, mainly actually uh, on the other side that logging does with promoting and uh, uh, bands abroad, a lot of world music acts actually are on his uh, uh, roster, roster, so, roster. So it's, uh, I would say it's not something that we uh, we have it on a side. So it seems like um, also in the festival landscape, uh, if things are not going the simple way, we have to find a workaround all the time. So you are... Well, <laughs> you, you, are... you know Login. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Well. So uh, he's used to doing everything that everyone says it's impossible to do. So. Yeah, but we, we, so. can't, we can't base a general strategy on login because he's an institution himself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, working with, uh, with him is also, you know, you learn a lot of things on the way. And uh, whenever you, you get surprised about something that looks like, I don't know, not typical or something that maybe you would mm -hmm. think it will not work out it turns out that it can it, it can work out well and uh, this type of uh, going uh, approaching from di different angles to to the music scene is, is has shown to for us for example has shown to be a good challenge and to have good results on the way of uh, how we build our scene because uh, we also need to promote this kind of uh, acts to, to our audience in a country that, for example, 
just just one thing for example we don't have a music media only devoted for music mm -hmm. so we don't so for me that's a big deal for example that you know we don't have a, a, a print or any oh, except for radio channels uh, which are devoted to promotion of, of music and uh, when we act as such uh, an accelerator for the for the local acts for the regional acts I think it's a big deal for, for bands and for audience as well. Yeah, so on typical lineups, on typical festival formats, on typical finances, on typical not, business models. But it's not with going like going with head through the wall. Like it's not we really want to be a, a, a typical. No, it's it's not that the approach, but uh, it's um, struggling with the with the circumstances. I would say more because. Uh, yeah. It's a small country, uh, not so large audience if you divide it so, through genres. So uh, usually if you wanna have a major event as uh, Taxirat is or as D festival is for 10,000 10, people uh, each year, for example, then you have to mix and you have to, to, to call every, to, to have everyone on your festival. So that's also just a way how to, uh, to, to take it on another level. Uh, the festival scene, the event industry, and of course the music scene in general. That's the, it's like finding a way to, to, to do things better. It's not like, let, let's be like something that not, nobody done. Let's do something that nobody done before. It's, it's not that the challenge. The challenge is to, to take it further and to, to, to take it on a higher, higher level of uh, when, when quality of the music scene is in question. Does this sound familiar to you, Boyan? Does it, uh, does it meet uh, your experience? Yeah, uh, that's... Uh, uh, I mean, our experience is a little bit different. I mean, we don't have a uh, login here and his uh, all strat uh, strategies are uh, somehow uh, and sometimes completely strange, but it works for Macedonia as well. Serbia is... Uh, bigger country and the, the audience is much uh, wider but on the other hand you have major festivals going on in Serbia and then uh, we also have to uh, find out our own way I mean we cannot compete with the, the major festivals but we try to bring uh, and also educate the audience that's another issue and that's also why we have two uh, completely different festivals at the beginning ring ring festival was also including world music so it was like uh, 15 to 30 percent of the world music within the festival but then uh, i decided that we make two different things and then the audience uh, is sometimes the same uh, but sometimes it's completely we have uh, different audience and for example uh, Ring Ring Festival has much younger audience than World Music Festival Todo Mundo. Okay so Katrina can you suggest at least one artist from Pins Showcase this year that you should take? No uh, no way <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I, I will it's, it's it's 30 acts more than 30 acts and uh, yeah they're really great so I wouldn't like to say, go and see this band. It's a, it's a celebration of music. Um, it lasts three days and it's a chance like, uh, you know, once in a year or even, even uh, less because last year we were just online. Yeah. So um, I think- That was a very good online edition though. Also I'm, untypical. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I would just call everyone to visit our website. It's uh, pinconference.mk. Uh, and uh, we have all the artists and the program there, the lineup, the delegates, the speakers. So it's a really impressive program for three days for, for this part of the world, <laughs> but bringing together lovely people and great music, really great bands, all of them. I wouldn't, I really won't allow myself self to say, go and check these bands, check them all. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll tell you afterwards, I'll be there. <laughs> and, and now that we are talking about that, we can, and this for the audience we can continue there i just it just popped in my mind that we'll have a panel there yeah. about the stereotypes on the balkans the wide 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 east panel yes yes uh, <laughs> which will be fun i guess mm, so see you there
And thank you very much, Katerina. Thank you, Bayan. Good luck with thank you, Balaj. Good luck with good luck with Pin. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Thank see you. you. See you soon. <laughs> see. You. Thanks for everybody else out there. Oh. Bye. 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 -bye.